If you want to achieve an A or A star in your maths exam, you don't just need to study smart, but you also need to think smart in your exam. What should you focus on? What should you ignore? And how do you check and answer questions as fast as as you can. In this video, I'm gonna break all of that down to you step by step, but before I do that, I'm gonna ask you a very important question. Are you finding A-levels or GCSE stressful or time consuming or maybe even hard? But you're looking at the prices that tutors charge you and you're just like, nah, <laughs> way too expensive and yeah, I can't afford any of this. And if that's the case, then same, because I've been through the exact same thing. But let me introduce you to something that will change that. Medicoach. Medicoach is an affordable tuition platform run by A-star tutors who are actually studying at top universities as we speak. As you know, questions have changed over the years. The specification has also changed over the years. However, these tutors have recently sat their exams, which means that they know exactly what it's like, what the new spec is about, and they know how they can support you with your session. Earlier, I mentioned that it's an affordable tuition platform. If you're looking at tutors nowadays, they usually charge above 40 pounds an hour. Okay, cool, so that's that. However, Medicoach offers a starting price from 26 pounds an hour to 29. Like, that's like crazy. Not only does Medicoach pair students up with tutors who are planning to do similar degrees, but they also pair students up with tutors who set the exact same exam board as you which means if you're studying for edxl you will be paired up with a tutor who also sat an edxl exam but not long ago recently they're also at top universities which means if you have any questions to do with the application process or anything like that they got you covered and all of that for this price like forget this one this is what you want and it gets better if you're still unsure about whether you want to get into this that's fine if you use this code, you get 50% off the first session you have with them. And I ain't talking about no, uh, get to know them, speak about what your progress is on. No, they offer that for free. Now, that's a no-brainer for me and a lot of students will agree because spots are filling up fast. Which means if you are interested in signing up to MediCoach, then you need to do that today. Okay, Kieran, I'm interested. How do you do that? There is a Google form where you can fill out and then give your details or you can pop MediCoach a DM on Instagram and they will reply to you as soon as possible. Their Instagram, Google form, all in the description below. But apart from all of that, we're going to be looking at how you can achieve an A or A star in your maths exam. So let's get straight to it. First, I'm going to talk to you about what you should do when you first get into the exam, when you're sitting down and you've got the paper in front of you. And then the invigilator tells you to write your candidate number, your name and your address, blah, blah, blah. Once the exam has started and you open your paper, I think advice that I've heard from a lot of people is to just scan, like scan your paper, your entire paper, go through the whole paper, flick through the pages and all of that stuff. I actually disagree with this. I believe that this adds a lot of unnecessary stress. Your mind is gonna wander onto the questions that you saw towards the end and think, okay, I've got a rush, I've got a rush, I've got a rush. No, take your time, lock in, question by question. Start with question one, do question one, go to question two next, go to question three, question four, blah, blah, blah. The papers are always designed to put the easiest questions at the start to ease you into the exam. So it wouldn't make sense to scan the entire paper before you actually do some proper questions because then you'll just get stressed and you'll start overthinking and this will worry you out a lot. Pay attention to the marks. The standard rule is you wanna spend a minute for a mark. If you see a question that's worth one or two marks, then don't spend five minutes on it. Literally don't. You're wasting your time. You're wasting the amount of marks you can get in the exam. I think there's a huge misconception that, okay, because it's one or two marks, it's gonna be hella easy. So I shouldn't struggle on this one. And then they focus on the, that question for 10 minutes. And even after the exam, they're bugged out that they didn't get the one or two marks. When you've literally missed out on other questions that are worth 10 marks, 12 marks, 13, 15, 16 marks. However, if a question was around five or six marks, you know you need to spend around five to eight minutes on it. And if you spend any more, then you're just wasting time. If a question was one or two marks, then it doesn't require multiple steps. So don't expect to be working out loads for that question as well. Like it, it's not necessarily the case. However, if it's five or six marks, it usually requires multiple steps. You can usually gain method marks by just putting your working out. So just make sure you analyze the vibe of the question just by how much marks they award you for it. Okay, so that's great. So you know exactly not to go and rush yourself in the exam. Just do it by question by question. That's what you're gonna wanna do. 
And you're also gonna wanna look at the marks that they award you so then you understand the vibe of the question. I'm now gonna talk about what you should do when you're reading the question. How do you read the question like a detective? I like to think of questions like a body. So the body has skin, which is on the surface, which is what you can see. The body is also comprised off of muscles and bone. But even delving deeper into that, it has a heart. And now I'm gonna explain why the body can be linked with the way you think about a question. Just like I explained the skin being the surface information, so is the question. A question can include a lot of useless information. Jimmy went to the store. Luke drove a car. Who cares? <laughs> These are all useless information, usually here to throw the student off. So treat this as blah, 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 and kind of disregard it. Okay, so that's the skin. The muscles and the bones are the numbers that are used. What type of numbers are used? What equations are used in the question? The thing that gives the question the structure. Because if you just simply said, Jimmy went to the store on a Saturday morning, and that was the question, why on earth would it be on a maths exam? So numbers and equations and all of these types of stuff are used to give structure to that question. Now, all of that is great, but if you want to find the heart, which is the core of that question, what topic does that question ask you to use? What is its mindset? What is its intention? And I'm gonna give you three tips to help you answer these questions. The first tip is to scan for trigger words. Show that most times they want you to prove something. Show that X equals blah, blah, blah. Show that this equation equals zero. Find the maximum or minimum that usually means differentiate and set that equal to zero. Or it can mean find the turning points, maybe complete the square. So you know that this has nothing to do with solving an inequality. You know that this has nothing to do with integrating or solving some sort of tr trigonometric equation. Solve, okay, when I hear the word solve or think about solve, I'm thinking what process is used to solve factorization, quadratic formula, substitution, maybe simultaneous equation. By identifying these trigger words, notice how I've identified what topics they include. And not only the topics, but the method within the topics that they want. And that's just from one tip, I've got two more. Next tip is to look at the last sentence of the question. Remember when I mentioned that the skin of the question usually includes the useless part? That is usually at the first part of the question. Jimmy went to the store, met Sarah, and then they became friends, and then they profited, blah, 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 blah. And at the last part of that question, find out how much did they profit, or something like that. And the trigger words that I mentioned earlier are usually contained in the last part of the question. And always know that the question, they always give you enough information and they always give you the bare minimum, unfortunately. Look at the numbers that are given. Also, what type of numbers are they as well? Are they coordinates? Okay, I'm gonna have to use coordinate geometry. What equation do they give me? Do they give me something like one plus X over six all to the power of six? If that's the case, probably binomial expansion. How else would I expand that out? <laughs> do I see log there? logarithms. Try and know what they're giving you exactly or what type of numbers they're giving you. And also don't just identify what type of numbers but identify what numbers are given. They're given equations, coordinates, graphs and with that what information are you missing from it? Are you missing a gradient, a point? Are you even missing a transformation? I hope this all makes sense. I would also like to mention something as well. Reading the question and knowing exactly what they want you to do is very challenging. I think that's probably one of the hardest parts about answering questions and so my advice with that is to just practice 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 exam papers because the more you practice the more you have x-ray vision and see beyond the skin but after you've read the question and you've understood exactly what topic they want you to answer or what they want from you and you're all confident sitting in your chair smiling to yourself that you're gassed but then you realize you have to answer the question how should you approach answering the questions? Well, before you even think about answering the questions, think what formulas do you need? And whatever formulas you need, I suggest you just drop them now because chances are you will actually gain method marks for that. And after that comes the process of you actually working out the answer. Don't skip steps. Write as much as you possibly can on paper. You don't need to write a whole essay on why you were able to solve an equation. All you need to do is just work out step by step what you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing. Method marks are what's going to get you your top grade, <laughs> like genuinely. Another tip I have for you is once you've written down your answer, don't just move on, have a reality check. Think about the answer you put down. Does that make sense? 
And I know I mentioned the skin being useless information, but in this specific tip that I've got for you, the skin actually becomes useful. Let me give you an example. If you were to work out how much the price of each apple was, does it make sense if you got $26,000 as your answer? For an apple, for one apple, $26,000, have that reality check and be like, yo, this kind of doesn't make sense. <laughs> Another example, if you solved an equation for time and you got negative time. So unless you're time traveling and you're John Tit or something, you shouldn't be getting negative time. Like that shouldn't happen at all. Just get that small reality check of, okay, does this make sense? Okay, so another tip I have for you, you've done the question, you've completed the question, you had that reality check, and you're like, okay, I'm happy with it, I've done the steps, I think I'm correct, but who knows, you know, I, it's not like I have the mark scheme with me. Wrong. No, you can know. Use your calculator. It is amazing how many students don't use their calculators to help know whether that answer is correct. Like, the calculator, I will say this, and I will keep saying this, is literally a mark scheme. There are so many different ways you can use your calculator to actually check whether you got the answer right. One example is differentiating on your calculator. You can literally differentiate on your calculator, sub in limits, and then compare your answer with the calculator's answer. If they are the same, great good mark your question with a tick so then you know that when you're going back to it and when you're checking your answers again you can brush over that one because you got it correct you can do the same with integration literally use the limit and then find the answer partial fractions if you literally substitute in any random number in a partial fraction the left hand side of the equation should equal the right hand side no it works with any sort of equation whatsoever i guarantee at least a quarter the questions that you've got in your exam you'll be able to use a calculator okay so throughout this video i've assumed that you're just a perfect student but what if you don't even know how to answer the question which to be honest is most of us right we don't actually know how to answer the question a lot of the time so then what do we do in an exam we panic we hesitate and we're just like yo why can't i do this i thought i saw something similar to this but now my brain shut off if you're struggling i know it's hard but the worst thing you can do at this point is panic if you can jot down as many formulas as you possibly can because chances are you can get some sort of marks from that question the question that they give you i literally write out again not word for word not bar for bar but i just write down the general information and chances are just by doing that maybe your brain will be stimulated and understand okay I've got these types of numbers and I've got this. So I've actually got enough information to work out another thing from this. And whether the question's asking you to work that thing out or not, just do it. Then again, that may not always work. And if it doesn't work, then just leave it. Leave the question. Mark an X on your paper so you know when you're checking your answers. That question is one that you were very, very stuck on. And also, who knows, when you're doing other questions, your brain might unlock and be able to solve that problem that you couldn't solve before. So just mark it down as an X and then just come back to it later because the worst thing you want to do is spend so much time on one question that literally no one in the country was even able to do because you can still gain marks from other questions. But if you're wasting time on a question that literally no one was able to do, then what was the point? <laughs> okay, so congratulations, you finished the last question on your paper. Maybe you haven't done every single question fully, completely. Maybe you've skipped some. Maybe you've done all of it. Maybe you've just, yeah, finessed it. <laughs> Whatever it is, still check your answers. The questions where you mark down a big X on it, make sure you prioritize those ones. Go to the ones you even got correct and make sure you list it out as much as possible. But the ones where you put a tick on it, then you, you don't need to waste too much time. You can literally just be like, okay, I have got that one correct, so I, I know I have. Don't be too upset if you don't answer every single question correctly. To get an A star, you don't need to get every single question correct. I didn't get every single question correct in my exams, not 100%. However, I just planned strategically and that's what gets you the A star. And guys, just by knowing these tips that I've mentioned in this video today, your chances of getting an A or A star will increase. And not just by that, because it's not enough just watching a video of me telling you what to do, but it's also just practicing past papers. Practice as much as possible. And I'm telling you, you will see results. In fact, I have made a video on this. If you want to see the tips I have for revising for A-level maths or further maths, or even just preparing to get an A or A star in it, then I've made a very, very important video. So I suggest you watch that. And yeah, 
However, that is the end of this video and I hope that you have found this video useful. If you have found this video useful, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of the video, obviously like I just said, and please stay tuned for more videos coming out later. All right. If you guys have other tips that weren't even mentioned in this video, please leave them in the comment section down below. They will help other people out and yeah, you'll just be a G. <laughs> but yeah, guys, stay safe, stay hydrated. God bless and peace.